more and more. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm, I didn't become a part of any uh, adult agencies or programs, so I'm skipping uh, three and four. I, I wasn't a part of I wasn't a part of them, but for when I was in college, I used a program called Oasis for accommodations. For accommodations. Uh, and they, they were extremely helpful wherein I can't take my tests with other people because I see them finishing and I'm like, I'm immensely behind. And so I just rush and without actually thinking that through my work. And so I, I'd, get, I'd get really dinged on that. So Oasis would give me a quiet place to go, or they would help me with study, or they would help me with ways to use a note card if I needed one, and I requested to use one during tests or my finals, because Asperger's was based upon memory, and when I get stressed out, I have no memory. <laughs> so what? Oh. Without them, it would have been really difficult. I probably would not have passed math. <laughs> so, other than that, within the district, within the district. Oh, put me very. What, tra what transition did for me was, I didn't see it then while I was in it, but when I. I did see a few things. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> what I noticed was that I was, I was ahead in time. What took me a while to understand socially, do putting this put, gave me a great jump start in actually understanding social cues and social understanding and being able to talk to people and feeling like an adult in a college course instead of a high schooler with just a bunch of other kids feel more like an adult if that makes any sense at all <laughs> um what have i learned and then surprised hey, you between the time you exited and transitions services until now um i'm still amazed that even though i went into avp to do welding i exited AVP as a machinist. Um, I'm working with titanium, and I never thought I, I in my in my wildest dreams I never thought I'd be doing anything medical, but it it took definitely quite a few jumps to realize I'm going to try welding, and then teachers noticing that I have the desire and the fortitude to learn and try any processes because to me I found it I found it entertaining and fun so they let me play with the lathes even though that wasn't their that wasn't their area at all they let me they taught me a little bit about it and I got to get machining credits in a welding course because of what it because of what I learned and what I was able to do on these mach machines which made me realize that maybe I'm not exactly a welder but more of a machinist so it helped me figure out where I need to go. Um, recommendations for students who are planning to transition into the adult world soon. The two biggest ones that I could possibly think of are questions and patience. Questions being don't be afraid to ask because some people think of questions as kind of being weakness. But to me, if I don't understand, I, how do I, I don't feel really any better. So I ask tons of questions. I still ask tons of questions. And people think of it as, at my work, as arguing. But I'm really, I'm still confused. Um, patience as, if you have a hard time learning as much as I did, it's still, it'll take time. So people, it, it takes people time to get on the level as you are. So that's, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> okay, uh, we just had another couple arrive, and I'd like to introduce them.
Nick Wampler and his mom, Patty. Okay, and now what we'll do is uh, both the parents and students will read through the questions and answer those. You can take turns answering the questions that are there. Okay? As they did introduce, this is Nicholas, and um, he speaks, but it's relatively limited, so I'll let him kind of say what he's going to say, and then I'll help describe the question from there. Can you say hello? Yeah. Okay. Now I want to talk about your school. Okay. Yeah. I'll ask you a question. So the first one is, where are you now in terms of employment? post-secondary training or independent living. Currently, Nicholas is um, at a day program. During his transition um, opportunities, he had opportunities to um, work as a um, non-paid um, volunteer um, at YMCA. Yes. And he also worked at um, Walgreens. Yes. He, where else did you work? Yes. <laughs> um, he also worked at a bagel shop and um, did several um, activities at the art thrift store. Um, he enjoyed all of them. Um, the Walgreens one, I think, I'd speak mostly to, which is a, in District 11, they partnered up with Walgreens and um, with job coaches, they allowed students to go in and learn skills based on each individual student. So um, in Nicholas's case, he was pricing. He could um, take information, take direction, and um, do far better than I would have ever thought. And for the most part, Nicholas understands absolutely everything, except that the Denver Broncos didn't win. <laughs> we all have one. <laughs> He's still pretty trying to convince me they did. Um, I initially always wanted to look at things from the idea of what do I want him to learn? And I had to really open my mind to say, what experiences? do I want him to have? Because it's in the experience that we all learn as adults. And when I saw him at Walgreens um, being asked to go water the flowers in the spring, I envisioned him dumping and pouring an entire can on one flower. And yet, he totally understood how to get the can, fill it with water, and go out and lightly water the flowers. As the customers pulled up and noticed him, they did a double take to think, wow, you know, he's really watering them. And it was in that moment that it really dawned on me. It's all in the journey. It's in the process. It isn't in each and every little thing that they learn. Because um, obviously I wanted him to read, and I wanted him to, you know, talk, and, you know, um, do all sorts of things that were really, really important. Um, he, however, decided he was on a different path um, because I was really kind of ambivalent about the whole inclusion and um, struggled with it back and forth. Um, and by high school, he just decided, you know, all right, you do whatever, but I'm going to get included in this school. Um, and he did. He was well liked, uh, went to homecoming, went to prom. He didn't miss out on anything. Um, and that is how I see him participating in the community. Um, as far as um, independent living, he's living at home with us and probably will be um, until I can envision something otherwise. Um, 
again, how he became su successful in each of these areas, a lot of it is not selling your children short because they can learn so much more than what we always think. Um, and every day he's convincing me of that. Um, this last year or so, he got very involved in politics and um, was probably one of um, Barack Obama's, you know, crusaders. And you got to meet him, didn't you? Yes. Um, and he had a wonderful time. Um, and initially my neighbors were like, really, you're gonna let him do that? He knew more about the issues and the subjects than I ever knew when I cast my first vote. So um, he will constantly surprise me on how much he understands. It is unfortunate to, to me that he has some difficulties communicating. He was born with a cleft palate, and in addition to the Down syndrome, he has low tone, and so the surgeries really made his speech even harder. Um, we are working with an adult agency, um, Our House Incorporated, also um, slash Bright Futures is a um, part of that. Um, it is a day program, and um, we've been doing, we have been involved in that since transition. And me and Nick both went and looked at multiple agencies, and it is in our house that we found that it felt like family, it felt like home, it felt like the individuals and the staff were not just there doing a daily job, they were really building relationships. And um, he loves it. He builds um, relationships with people. He has a best little buddy that they go do things with. And um, I, I am very, very happy. I think the quality of employees that they have is outstanding. And I guess I would encourage any of you guys that are looking into agencies to go over, to, to look physically at them, to walk through them, to um, understand the staff to student ratio, because that can very much change how they do services. If that ratio is too high, the opportunities for them to have any work experience goes down tremendously. Um, and it also, it's hard for them to learn individual skills without having to, to take the whole group and, and try to do what one child wants. Um, and, and there is a little give and take there, but um, the smaller the group, the more frequent each child gets to participate in what he really is interested in. Um, how have we navigated the adult system? Mm. Did you go to court recently? Mm. Mm. What did you go to court for? Mm. Um. Mm. <laughs> did you go to court because of guardianship? Yes. Yeah. What did the judge say? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think the adult, n navigating the adult system is very difficult, and yet, um, very important. Um, Nicholas is adopted, and I thought we had things all, you know, tidied up, and we knew a, knew a lot, and um, we were in a situation in which we needed to get guardianship, and relatively quickly. And so, um, we obviously did what most people do, which is call the ARC, and get the packet, and start looking through it, and it was completely overwhelming. I was like, yeah, this, this is hard. So we ended up going through a lawyer to do that. I don't necessarily think in, you would have to. I think it's a lot of paperwork, and um, it's, it's important. For all of you guys who are like going, what? At 18, 
um, you have to have guardianship or in case, I should say, in case a medical issue comes up um, and or um, funding issues. We ended up having to have it because Medicaid was going to appeal something and we really couldn't um, ask on behalf of his circumstances because as far as Medicaid was concerned, we were nobody. Um, so um, as far as negotiating the um, adult services, it can be as, I mean, it can start with SSI, with getting on wait lists for resource exchange. Um, it can be um, applying for like a DVD program. There are waivers and waivers out there and um, it's endless. I'm always learning something new every day. And I would say the hardest part of it is the rules are ever changing. So what you hear today may not necessarily be what happens when your child is ready to do it. And we've had instances where what one person will tell you, the other one will say something different. And it can be pretty frustrating because you can spend a lot, a lot of time. And I would agree, patience is critical. And I am not really very patient. <laughs> but luckily, you are. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything on adult agencies. Again, I think the only thing I would reiterate is there is a lot of them. Um, resource Exchange, the ARC, all the adult agencies that do day programs. Um, for the most part, I thought District 11 did really well explaining and telling us what's out there um, in terms of what we might want to be looking into. Um, I think there, there's always room for, you know, helping people get engaged in, in starting that process. Um, so I'm hoping in the future maybe there'll be like a little mini workshop type thing that, you know, you can collaborate with and, you know, fill out your guardianship papers. Um, um, have we requested accommodation at work college and did they do that? Well, not so much with Nicholas. However, I had an older, I have an older child that was in the AVP program. Um, and yes, we did um, ask for accommodations and to a small degree, they accommodated. Um, my daughter was in the um, childcare program in the AVP and um, I have to say in her scenario it was not a good choice for us um, at least going in I think that if we would have had a completely different idea about what that was going to look like for her it could have made the whole thing better but of course when you start college and you're all with your buddies the goal is to get in there and start and get a good grade and um, and in hindsight I wish I would have just sent her with the idea that it's the experience don't worry about the grade um, have fun um, because a lot of the AVP for people and I'll speak only to child care the syllabus that she came home with was harder than my nursing syllabus and I was overwhelmed um, so it isn't always like um, accommodated for special needs. I think we are, we are always reminded that the AVP stands for Advanced Vocational Program and it was designed in high school for kids who were very advanced. And at some point along the way they decided that intermix special needs kids with that. So. Um, I um, 
he has not really shown a lot of interest in the whole college thing, um, other than basketball and sports and his, his team winning all the time. Um, what benefits did we get from transition services within your district? Um, I have to say in Nicholas's case, and also my daughter's case, we have benefited greatly from the services and from opportunities. My daughter had opportunities to volunteer at daycares and um, just lots of different experiences. And um, also, um, Nicholas has had more opportunities than I can think of. Um, and he's ever seeking them. I mean, he's trying to get his dad to take him to Washington, but um, we'll see about that. But, you know, we never dreamed he'd be able to do the Walgreens thing. Matter of fact, when I was sitting at an IEP meeting, with the whole team at one point, they were like, oh no, <laughs> that's just not, you know, he's not going to be able to do that. And, you know, within a year later, he was doing it, succeeding. Walgreens so wanted to keep him on. However, and this is probably the one thing I would um, caution you is that once transition is over, some of the um, businesses that will really support the kids and work with them have a very difficult time because we have not been t able to access a liability coverage insurance to allow them to stay. Um, so once the district is no longer over, over them, we, we were unsuccessful in finding that. <coughs> However, Walgreens really, really wanted it. Um, so, something to just think about. Um, mm, what did we learn that surprised us between the time you accident services until now? Um, What have you learned, Nick? What have you learned? What do you know? Yes, yes what? Yes. Have you learned anything? Yes. What have you learned? Yes. yes. Are you learning every day? Yes. Okay. Yes. For me, I learned just to take every day and um, enjoy what he's what he's doing and to try to find areas that he might be interested in. Right now we're looking at horseback therapy and um, just trying to see what he would be interested in and also just to pay attention to him. Um, because what's available right now may be very different than five years from now. And um, one of the things I've learned is just enjoy the moment. Don't always look to the other, you know, the near future. I remember when we were in a um, play group with all our little group friends, and he wasn't walking, he was very slow to walk, and we would laugh and say, you know, it's so important to us right now, but by kindergarten, will we really ever remember what age, what, you know, what that meant? And that is so true in so many ways. Um, and I think as far as Colorado Springs School District, um, I was listening to one of the commercials the other night that was aired at um, the Super Bowl. And it's the little child that's falling down over and over again. And then it shows an Olympian or two falling and then it shows an Olympian doing really well, hugging his mom and saying, thank you, mom, for teaching us that in the fall is where we learn. And for me, District 11 taught me a lot about falling and getting up and starting again, and maybe not always knowing exactly, 
but knowing that there are people out there that care and want to guide you and want to help you. Um, I think that sort of summed it up in a pretty good way. If anybody has any questions, I'd certainly be willing to ask. I'm not sure you're going to get much more of Nicholas other than yes. <laughs> hey, Randy, do you have the photograph? Yeah, do you have the photograph from Walgreens? He might talk if we bring that up a little bit. At his graduation, this was the gift Walgreens gave him. Can you tell him what it was? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Yes what? Who is in the picture? He's him. Huh? He's him. That's who? You? He's him. Mm -hmm. And who's this? No. Who's with you? Who's the lady with you? Who's the lady with you? Yes. All right, yes. <laughs> Did you have fun? Did you have fun at Walgreens? Yes. Okay, hold the picture up. Okay, the next parent and student group is Reggie and his mom, Tina. Hello, my name is Reggie Madrill. And I'm sorry my signs are kind of awkward right now because I haven't signed in a long time, almost two years, because I've been, I haven't been hanging around much with deaf people in the last few years. I was here at CSDB for, since fifth grade until now. Well, actually not now, but since 2010 is when I graduated. I'm not sure. Right now, I'm working at the Double Tree Hotel, and I live with my mom. Sorry, I'm a little nervous right now. I haven't spoken in front of people for a while. I've worked at the Double Tree. I do work at the Double Tree as a cook. I've been there for almost two years, and it's been great so far. I started with the basics at Aspen Point, and they taught me how to cook. I started with the basics, cooking for, for example, making salads and a variety of different entrees. And then I worked there for about nine months. Well, not really worked, but it was kind of like a school, a transition type school education setting. So I learned to cook there. And then the head chef named Pete, I can't remember his last name. He's, it's an Italian last name, so I don't know what that is. It started with an A, but the other letters I don't know. So he taught me 
at Aspen Point for quite a while. And then he moved to the Doubletree to work at the Doubletree Hotel. And then after he moved, I still was in the transition program at Aspen Point. And then I started to work at the Doubletree after that. So it was a month of training first. And then I've been working there ever since. I did start part time, and now I'm full time. So I moved up the ladder. And I'm what you'd call the fourth lead chef, fourth lead chef. And I've been very successful at it. Reggie, are you working with any adult agencies now? Like the DB Department of Vocational Rehabilitation, BR? No. Not now, but I did in the past and when I was in the BTL Bridges to Life program. I worked with DVR. And I think SSI, do you want me to include that? I did, I did, was involved with SSI in the past. And I uh, had DVR with me pretty consistently. while I was in the BTL program. And how are you navigating the adult services system now? So you said you're not using DVR anymore. When did you stop using DVR? I stopped using DVR after I um, left or exited the BTL program. But I did use them a little bit for two or three months after I left the BTL program for some support. I got some help from them. Uh, they helped me with getting some hearing aids and, and many things. Um, do you request any accommodations at work? Like an interpreter or an FM system? Uh, no. DVR did provide me with the hearing aids and there was a, some type of technology like an FM system um, my boss would use a microphone that would come directly into my hearing aid um, so I would know exactly what the chef needed sometimes the chef would yell and I, I, I heard him but I couldn't understand what they were saying so I use that um, special hearing aid, um, and each chef would have a microphone on them, so I'd be able to follow what each of them were saying regarding their food orders. Sometimes it wasn't easy. I sometimes misunderstood what they were saying. So I do use hearing aids um, quite a bit, but not, I, I, oh, in the past I had no hearing aids, but now I do. And when I I wasn't quite used to all the sounds, so when I became, uh, when I got into the kitchen, it was so loud in there with the amplification from the hearing aid, so sometimes I would turn it off, so I would be totally deaf because it was too noisy. And I use hearing aids, um, I to use hearing aids, I can hear better with them. What benefits did you get from your transition services, so your, the Bridges to Life program? How did that help you? What do you mean by that? How did, what services did Bridges to Life give to you? How did the teachers help you? They gave him benefits in um, supporting him, giving him options, giving him different job opportunities. He first started out with um, working at the Home Depot. And then from Home Depot, he, he got out of um, his shyness, whereas he wouldn't talk to anybody. 
he would look at people like, yep, mm-hmm, okay. Um, he wouldn't do eye-to-eye -eye conversation. He wouldn't ask questions at all. Um, the program bridges the life. The teachers kept working, kept working, and everyone supported him whatever he wanted to try. They tried to get him to do cooking earlier, but he said, no, no, I'm, I, I need to work with my hands. Well, he didn't understand working with your hands is working in the kitchen. And each job that he was handed, he did it at 100%. He had people coming in Home Depot asking, well, where's Reggie? I need him to load up my truck. Um, no, I'll wait for Reggie. I mean, it was a good feeling for him because he never worked around the hearing community. He never had that opportunity. And I noticed a lot of the deaf community won't even, the kids won't even walk up to someone and say, hi, my name's so-and-so. They won't, they won't exert themselves to that point. But with my son, now you can't keep him quiet. He goes to everybody. Um, he always said, I talk too much. But if he's at his job site, um, the chef will come up and ask, uh, ask me, do you have any more kids that will work good? Because he works continuous. He never says no. If the chef asks him to do something, he does it without complaining, nothing. They have uh, many guests that come to their hotel and they write up, I think I've got two pages now, of, of people saying how good Reggie is. Um, they give him tips, and he thought, oh, wow, I'm getting tips now. I'm making omelet station. They're handing me money. Oh, I like this. <laughs> um, the chef kept pushing Reggie. And like the teachers in Bridges to Life, they push the students to succeed. But it has to be the students wanting that thrive. And I would love to see the students with more thrive in them so where they want to grasp. It's like watching a small child asking, where, what? How do you do that? Why is that? It's like him opening up like, like that. It's now, how do you do that? I work, I work three jobs. He works one job. His goal was to get off of SSI. He met that goal. He no longer works or gets money from SSI. And he is, he's succeeding. He's really succeeding. Um, if you ask some of his other friends, what are they doing? They're sitting home. They're doing nothing. <laughs> And that, to me, is shameful. We need to put, our parents need to start asking questions like, what are you going to do? How are you going to do this? Um, how are you going to support yourself when I'm gone? Um, Reggie now, he's like, Mom, I'm supporting you. And I'm like, not yet. I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm not ready for the rocking chair. Um, everybody in where he works now, the chefs, um, he also worked at Colorado Gourmet Popcorn. He started packaging, and then he started cooking the popcorn. Came home smelling like butter many times. <laughs> um, he started getting into where anything he sees now, he wants to learn. He wants to do it. He asked questions, Mom, I want to try that. And I'm like, okay, let's go try it. If you don't support your child by standing behind them and, and kind of pushing them. Him, I had to get a crowbar and get him pushing <laughs> because Bridges of Life, we tried and tried to get him, but he was more in the thing of, oh, I know it, I know it, but he didn't know it, and now he does. And between his father and I, <laughs> we're grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful that he has because it was his opportunity to make it full time. Not once did he ask me to go to his job site and say, Mom, you need to, you need to help me with this situation. I can't handle it. Whereas before, I, I would always have to go and say, okay, what's the problem here? And I would have to deal with it. But now, Reggie, if he has a problem, he deals with it himself. 
he comes home and tells me, I said, thank God you, you did it. You handled it yourself. That's another step of growing up. You know, it's showing respect to himself and to everybody else that helped him to get him up on the ladder. To me, that's showing respect to them because they did a heck of a job getting him up on that step, I'm telling you. It took me two years to get to that place. Oh yeah, big time. To be honest with you, senior year, and I graduated, it was 09. And the day after I graduated, I was bawling. I just cried and cried for three days. I didn't understand what I was supposed to do out in the real world. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And my parents supported me And then the, the support from BTL helped as well. And I got through it. I went through BTL and learned a lot. Sometimes I acted up a little bit, I have to admit. You know, I was Mr. Know-it-all. Sometimes big-headed a little bit, a little bit arrogant. Sometimes I thought I knew what was going on in the world. I could do all this stuff. And then later I looked at myself and I was like, oh, okay, I was wrong, lots of frustrations. And I had to go way back and start at the beginning and start over again and take it slower and learn each step. So it took years, year after year, and it got better, better and better and better. And now it's, I'm a lot more successful. I'm not completely where I want to be, but I'm starting on that road to success. I would say the same as everybody else has said on the panel. I would recommend staying in class. Don't leave. <laughs> Don't leave BTL. Just stay. Sometimes I wish, you know, I could get back into BTL and learn even more. But I am happy where I am now. But if you do your job, you will be successful at work. Stay in the program in BTL. Stay. You will be successful like I am. And Tina, do you have any recommendations for parents who are planning to, their child's planning on moving into the adult world soon? Here, Tina. Mm -hmm. I think as parents, we try and try to stand behind our kids and lift them up and be there all the time for them. Sometimes we have to take a step back and let them go ahead of us, but still stay behind them and say, okay, I've got the pillow if you're gonna fall. I'll be there to pick you up. But don't stop trying to open doors for your children and find different opportunities for them. I mean, um, the opportunities are endless. And like I keep telling Reggie, the only person that keeps you from doing anything is yourself. So if you open up your heart and you see that star, keep reaching for it. No matter what you do, you don't let anybody ever tell you you're not good enough and you can't do it because there's not one person in here that, that can't succeed. Everybody can succeed. And with our kids and the schooling, um, Big Sandy School District is our, was our district. Um, they had an open door. They said, tell us what you need and we'll do it. We'll get it for him, whatever he needs. And the opportunity that they gave us was awesome. The support, bringing us into the um, Bridges to Life, they gave us an open door. We could do anything and ask for anything for, for Reggie's help. But the main part was Bridges to Life, it's getting him up on that step and starting his life. 
and by supporting your kids, let them go. That's the hardest part I had because I had to cut those apron strings from him and I'm still having trouble with the last one, but <laughs> he's still living with me. But really, I got a chainsaw for the next one. I really do. <laughs> Okay, now the next group of parent and student is Zach, John, and his mom, Tracy. Thank you. Zach, where are you now in terms of employment? I'm un unemployed. You don't have to read it. Oh. Just go ahead and tell them what's going on. I'm in I'm unemployed right now, so, and now I'm, we're going to try to visit some living experience on Friday. Yeah. So. Um, Zach is actually a great kid, but he does have a hard time processing things, so He's going to be stuttering a little bit. It doesn't mean anything. But in terms of your post-secondary training, Zach, are you going to go to PPCC or anything like that? No. OK. And what is your goal for independent living? Can I get out in the real, real, real. <laughs> OK. How did you um, come to the idea that you just need to go and be independent, or as independent as possible? No. Well, Got tired of being told what to do. <laughs> so, so, are you working with any adult agencies now? Yes, Rocky Mountain facility. Options. Options. Okay. And when did you start working with them? Since January. Okay. Is Zachary graduated um, in December? He took his diploma. He finished school in December because he turned 21 in uh, October. So they went through and he had a great opportunity through transitions, but um, they gave him some services and programs that he probably wouldn't have had access to. So the adult service system that he had access to was SWAP, which is School to Work Alliance Program. and they gave him the opportunity to work at Safeway. What did you do at Safeway? Been a, I've been a credit say clerk. Mm -hmm. He did that for how many years, Zach? A year and a half. Okay. And then where was the next place they brought you to? Touch math. And what were you doing there? Sorting all the... Touch math. Sorting all the m m math supplies. Great. It's a manufacturing... A company that actually puts together educational materials for smaller kids and Zachary was involved in putting all of those materials together. It was a great warehouse job. Unfortunately, Zach has um, some issues with impulse control and he was, um, he lost that position. So then he was starting work with another adult service system. What was that? That was TRA. No, or Goodwill. Goodwill. Okay. What did you do for Goodwill? Sorting every laundry and, and helping on the machines. Great. A lot of the programs that Zachary had access through the transition program really worked to see what his skill level was and where his options would lie when he finished transitions. If you have the opportunity to do that, I strongly suggest it because it really gave us an opportunity to see where his strengths were, where the deficits are, and where we can plan better for him. A lot of the stuff that we had goals and ideas um, kind of 
materialized into fact and reality. And sometimes as a parent, that's difficult to really embrace because you have all these ideas on where your kid's gonna go. I, um, I believe that transitions for Zach really helped cement where we needed to go. So when he finished in December, we spent the last couple of months just looking at where we're gonna go, what we're gonna do. The organizations like TRE, that he's been on that wait list since he was 14. Um, all of these things that we thought were gonna be in place didn't actually occur because there's waivers you have to have, there's disabilities and diagnoses and stuff that nobody really tells you about. So I'm glad this forum is here so that if you're in a position where you're not gonna be as independent as you thought or your child isn't gonna be able to go forward in the path that you thought was possible, you've got options available to you. Don't think you don't. Um, what benefits did you get from transitions from Peyton? I, I learned how to be a good worker and Mm -hmm. and work faster. Yeah. Um, the benefits that we really noticed is that they gave him so many options with SWAP and with um, different agencies like Goodwill and bringing us to different forums like the, um, oh my goodness. There was a, a fair that had all of the informational stands together so that as a parent you can walk in and they've got all the agencies together. All of that stuff came to us through the transitions program. Um, it, it is asking what he learned and what he was surprised to learn um, between the time that he exited transitions until now. What were you surprised to figure out? That I lost my job while after the transition again. Why did you lose your job, do you know? Because TRA waivers and I doesn't call for it. <laughs> that's actually a mistake, but that's okay. <laughs> we didn't recognize that once you finished with transitions, even though you hear, oh, well, he's got a really good opportunity for a job, what happens is funding and that's something that most of you guys might not be aware of but it's a big deal just like your ba your bank balance doesn't work if you don't have money coming in a lot of these places that opportunities arose through goodwill or tre or touch math if you don't have the funding they can't offer the assisted job and zachary is in a position where he has to have an assisted job so Maybe perhaps a lot of you are not in that position, but for some people it's very necessary and it really changes your outlook on your future if you have to have an assisted position. Zach, what if anything would you have done differently when you were in transition services knowing what you know now? That I should have, I know I would have been well in Safeway and kept that job for ever. <laughs> Safeway was a really great opportunity. It was close to home, and, and it was a good experience. They really embraced him. Um, so if you have the opportunity to go into a, a small area where they know you and they can help you transition into adulthood, that's a great thing. And Zach really did a, a great job there. But like most things with Zach, it, it turns into we have to have assistance. We have to have... Um, authority figures that really keep an eye on him. So that's changed our outlook tremendously. Zach, do you have any recommendations for students who are planning on to transition into the adult world soon? To try to get to the, into the swap, for, swap force to learn a skill. Great. <coughs> Just to wrap the, um, up my plans and, and what I think helped and what would benefit you guys. There's so many opportunities out there. It's just a matter of talking to your teachers, talking to your transition coordinators. They might not know everything, but they try their best. And if they can help you by giving you a whole slew of papers and say, just give it a try, do your best to try. Because so many things came to Zachary that we weren't expecting. The swap, the 
Goodwill Industries. He got to work in the laundromat. There's so many opportunities. If you ask, you'll find a path. Somebody gave us a um, informational packet on this college learning experience. And for a while, my husband and I really expected Zach to be able to go to a special needs college down in, in New Mexico. But this CLE, which is the College Living Experience, came up. And it's a pretty expensive program. But it's a three-week program. And you get to really learn the skill set of your student. And had we not done that, I think things would have been very different. Zachary got to go up to Denver to the Denver Metro um, campus and learn to live on his own for three weeks. And was that a good experience? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Zach found out he doesn't really like being on his own. <laughs> so that kind of changed our outlook on where we needed to go and it changed our view on on what was possible and what was necessary so now we're looking at options and we've got um, a meeting scheduled for Friday to look at assisted living and we had to navigate the different waivers that everyone at this panel has pretty much gone through there's you know the EBD waiver and there's the options and the long-term care and there's so many things that I wish they had, like other panelists have said, a whole bucket they could just give you and then you could say, okay, now what's relevant to me? Because so many of them are redundant and you're not sure what is relevant. If you're in the middle of transitions and you're coming out of it, just ask as many questions as possible and try to do your best to support your student because your job, in my opinion, is to try and get them as productive and as independent as possible. And everyone can contribute. So for Zach, his first independence is going to be getting into an assisted living facility and then getting him into a training program. And uh, that's the course we have to take. So hopefully our experience and our bumps and bruises have maybe helped to navigate your waters a little easier. Um, that's all I can say to that. So. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you guys. OK. So now we have plenty of time left. If you guys have any questions from the audience, please leave your questions. Or the live stream people, go ahead and ask your questions on the chat. But if you have any questions here in the audience, go ahead and raise your hand, and we will take turns answering your questions. And each of the parents will have an answer for you. I have a question. Um, I have a question for Reggie. Hi, I'm Naomi and I'm a transition teacher and job coach in the Employability Center at, uh, here at CSTB. And I want to capitalize on Reggie being here because there are a lot of current BTL students in the audience. And so Reggie, I'd like for you, if you would, just to speak to your peers, even though you're not in the program anymore, but they are still kind of your peers and people that you know and they know you. And I would like to, for you to speak to them about your experience being on SSI and then your goal and your hard work that led you to become truly independent and not rely on SSI. And if you could direct your answer to your peers sitting in this room, please, I'd appreciate it. On SSI, um, it's really um, limited income, and you, if you want to get more money, you have to work a job. For example, you know, on SSI, you get about six hundred dollars a month, and that's to pay your phone bill, um, to pay your car payment. Um, to pay your parents, <laughs> um, 
you know, whatever's left over, maybe $50 or so, I mean, that's what you use for gas and so on. So for having a job, you get more money. You could, you know, get a $600 check for two weeks of work. And, you know, you can pay mom, take care of that. And, you know, my parents aren't, they're not bugging me as much about my money. So being on SSI, it's not really fun. Sometimes you have to give them information about your paycheck. You have a lot of paperwork you have to give them. It's really a rigorous process. And I didn't like that. So I just made the decision. You know, I told my mom, well, I told my boss that I wanted to work full time because, you know, I wanted to get off SSI. It was just a lot of paperwork and there were so many things. You know, I couldn't work over 20 hours. I had to be below that. So I was just through with it. And I started um, working at the Doubletree part time. And, you know, I still had SSI and I was going through that process. And then my boss. Um, suggested that I work full-time. He offered me a job, and it was more of a leadership, leadership position. And I could help teach kids how to, you know, their knife skills and, you know, because cooking requires knife skills and a lot of different things. And, you know, with cooking, some of the kids didn't know how to cook, so I got to teach them that, and I was working full-time. So really, SSI compared to a job, I was just through with it. I'd prefer to work. I think it's a better option. You get more money, and you can live on your own. And with SSI, you can't. You can't live on your own. It's really difficult. So I was through with SSI. I think a job is way better. We have a question from the internet. Um, this question is to the parents. What was your number one resource when the students were transitioning into the adult world? <laughs> when Reggie is getting ready to go into the adult world two years ago, and he made a decision to go off of SSI. I was surprised because it was his idea, not mine. He was watching TV and where the government was saying that SSI pro program might be cut. And if it's cut, how, how is SSDI or SSI going to pay the people that are on it from 600 down to 200? How are they going to live? We're going to have more people out there looking for jobs, and no one will want them. So Reggie's like, well, it's time to get off of SSI and be um, a person in, out in the community. So he chose from going from $600 um, when he noticed one in one month he made over $3,000 from working over, over time and just plugging it through. He was amazed. He's like, wow, I can make the money. And there's not one person out there that can make more. Well, mom, come and work with me. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> that's OK. I, I don't need that. But the biggest help that Reggie got was Bridges to Life and his school. Without, the, without his teachers and the people that kept pushing him and pushing him and showing him, yes, you can, yes, you can. All the kids, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. It gave Reggie the opportunity to know that he is capable to do anything. I can't tell you how many times he's outshined me and, okay, Mom, let's have a contest. Let's see who can cut these green peppers quick. <laughs> well, he wins. He's like, Choo -choo -choo. and he does this at work. 
um, the chef keeps pushing Reggie and saying, well, can you do this? Can you do this? Well, yes, I made Spanish rice the other day. How did he do that? Reggie has a reading disability, but he soared through it. And I can tell you what, all the workers at Doubletree would rather eat Reggie's food than any of the other chef's food that are in the galley for them, you know. So the main support was his school and his teachers. And I got to give them 100% credit on that. And I come behind because if I didn't hear something that I didn't like, I was always at the school saying, why? How come? I mean, the parents have to get in there and give their opinion. And don't take no for an answer. Stay with it. Insist that your school district get involved with your kids. Insist that they go to the Bridges of Life and say, hey, I want my kid in this. Your kid's going to say, oh, no. I don't need this. I, I, I got money on my own. No, you don't. The knowledge is in your brain. That's your money maker. And each of our kids here in, in Death of Mind School, you have that opportunity. Don't waste it. Listen to your teachers and get out there and, sh and make yourself proud of yourself. I mean, from 100%, he's, he's out there. He can show you anything and be so proud of himself. Not only helping himself, but hear, helping hearing people understand how to cook and how to do things. He's teaching them. So, you know, the opportunity is out there for y'all. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Was our most important resource, boy. I'm gonna say family, friends, um, the school district, uh, agencies, but probably most of all, um, perseverance and a whole lot of faith. When Rem started this journey in, in high school, we didn't know where he was going to end up, and I didn't know that he would be able to hold down a job or do what needed to be done. I imagined that he would be living with me forever. And Thanks for the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> but he was, he was just on a different path than all his peers, and I didn't know what that was going to look like. So um, his special ed teachers and support were humongous. At, now there's a lot more help for Asperger's than there was when he was in, in elementary school and middle school and high school. So he, he kind of paved the way. So he didn't have it as easy as some of the kids have it today. But um, I didn't know, I didn't understand how transitions would work. So it took the transition teachers explaining to me the opportunities that, that Rem had available to him and then talking to Rem and trying to figure out what was going to be the best path. And Rem could have graduated with his class and been done with high school at 18, 19. But I asked him to please <laughs> stay with the transition program because especially for an Asperger kid time is a friend and so the more time that he could spend not having to be in the real world you know having still that support the better it was and I don't know that he agreed with it at the time because every kid wants to get out of school and be done but being out of being able to do AVP got him into college got him used to having to deal with college teachers and what the homework looked like and all that. If he had graduated from high school, I don't know that he would have gone on and been successful at PPCC without having had the AVP in between, if that makes sense. So um, I, I'm just really grateful that he stayed in and gave himself that extra time because without it, I think that he might have been more lost. Would you agree? Yeah. 
Yeah. Obviously, I'm doing something, right? I'm sitting here talking about That's my right. life. That's right. That's right. That's right. And he could be, he has saved up plenty of money. He could be on his own right now. He, he is just waiting for a time to go when he's not going to be lonely. Right now, it's just about loneliness. It's not about whether or not he's able to cook for himself or clean. I don't mean that. I know. <laughs> I mean, if a roommate were to come along and, you know, they could find a place together, he would be more than, more than willing to probably go, right? I plead the fifth. <laughs> so. Stop it. I just want to say one other thing. I also think that one of our best friends was humor. And always using humor to get through difficult moments, um, to remind us that not everything gets to work out the way you want it at the time you want it, and, um, and relying just on the people who are around and support us. Because um, there's lots of people that will support you, and there's lots of people who will mm, not really understand. And um, I try to surround myself with those who support and educate those who don't understand. Mm -hmm. All the while Nick's educating us. I think for us being out in a small town of Peyton, Colorado, the biggest help for us was pretty much asking all of the teachers, the special ed teachers and the transition coordinators, without them we wouldn't have known who to talk to or where to go. They're the ones that pointed us in the direction of Special Olympics where we got to meet a whole bunch of other parents. Those are valuable resources that we just wouldn't have had had it not been for the teachers and, and the coordinators. If you don't ask the questions and you don't get involved, nobody's going to just hand it to you. So you have to ask. You have to be your advocate for your child. And you really have to understand that there's no right or wrong way to go through this. It's just stumbling your way through because everybody's an individual. So try to ask as many questions as possible from as many people as possible. Any more questions from the internet, the live stream, or from the audience? Any more questions? Awesome. OK. Thank you all for your time. And I want to let you know for the audience and for the panel, the parents and guests only, please go ahead and get your pizza in the back. Students, please wait until all the parents and guests have gone through the line and gotten their pizza, and then you can go after. Okay? Thank you so much. <laughs>